Shabbat Shalom. It's Sabbath and the streets are completely empty because Sabbath is a day of rest. So what a lot of people do is they sleep, they don't cook, they don't clean, they don't work. They just either stay at home or do the things that they like. And so that's why it's so quiet. Even if you're not religious and even if you don't believe in God, the country doesn't leave you an option. A lot of things or almost everything basically is closed. Shops are closed, the supermarket is closed, everything is closed. So I guess it maybe forces you to rest. When I was in the States, it was actually really weird to me that I could go on the weekend to wherever I wanted and everything was still open. <sighs> Uphill, I feel so out of shape. And what a lot of people do on Shabbat is that they go to the synagogue. And so there's three prayer times a day in the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. People are often wearing white because it's sort of what you do on a festive holiday or it's really pretty to see people and their families all dressed in white. It's festive. A lot can change within a year. I come back and literally half the mountain is gone. They are building new houses. So here we have mountains and we build with the mountain. And so you'll see it's sort of layered and so half the mountain has literally been so that is what we call a shafan sela in loose translation it's called a rock bunny ah, there's another one running hey rock bunny it's wanting to get back to its mommy Okay, so you, don't, you can't hear it, but what's happening behind me, there's children over there. And on the other side... So those kids are yelling to the kids on the other side of the mountain. And they can literally hear them because of the echo. Sound travels really differently in the mountains, I guess. I come out here and I literally feel like I can sort of like breathe. You know, it's wide open spaces and it's very intimate, even though it's very big. We have arrived my favorite view in the whole wide world. this place. I know that it's not green and lush and it doesn't have running water in the middle like a European countries that have a river in the middle of the city or it's not Hawaii and it's not the exotic Amazonian forest but it's home. This place has heard my innermost deep thoughts, my passions, my dreams, my my fears, my disappointments, my tears. I mean, God has seen all of me here. It's the one place that I really feel like I can go out into nature and whatever state I'm in, whether I look good or bad, I can come here and I can talk to God. Now, truth be told, <laughs> I've probably complained here about life more than I've thanked him. But this time around, it's really different. Every time I come back here, I'm different. God doesn't change, but I change. I remember as a school project, we came down here on a holiday called Tu Bishvat, which basically you plant a lot of trees on that day. All of this, all of this down here was all trees. And um, not all of them survived. Basically only that one survived. But these did survive. If anything can survive in the desert, it's an Israeli tree. Here I am talking about being alone in the desert and then um, some, like a family with kids came and 
we started talking because they're like, what are you doing? Yeah, but they're very sweet. People love the desert. The desert is such a beautiful place. People think about the desert as like monotone place that doesn't have any colors and it's just not true. There's so much beauty here. There's so much to see. There's so much to experience, you know? Say I'm climbing on the mountain or down the mountain like a little gazelle. You have to always watch your step when you walk because it can be a bit slippery. Anyways, I think certain places express best what the heart is going through and so the desert when people say oh i'm in a desert season like when you're in the desert that really becomes real because it's just dry here there's no water or it's hard to find water and it feels like what the heart goes through when you're going through a tough time when you feel like you're alone and that it's quiet and maybe not quiet but silent and you can't hear God. And I think as believers, it really, it scares us. You know, it scares us to feel like we're alone and without God. The desert really tests that part of you that feels like, is God actually here? Is God listening to me? Does he answer? And the thing is, you have to stay here long enough to get lost, get frustrated that you can't find your way, stop, silence your thoughts, and listen to God because without that, you're not going anywhere. You'll never get out of that desert. That's a difficult thing for us as human beings to do, especially if you live in our world today. There's just so, it's so hectic. It's so busy. There's so much information. There's so many voices. There's so many opinions. And sometimes we don't even know what our own opinions are until you sort of sit in silence It's a lot of dealing with yourself in the desert. It's a lot of looking things in the eyes and being like, oh, I don't actually like what I see or I don't like what I'm feeling or I'm not at peace because this place does two things simultaneously. It amplifies the voices that already are and then it silences them so that only the most important voice will come through. I went from all the way up there to all the way down here and it's not even the whole way. The only way to get out of a spiritual desert is to surrender. There's literally, I haven't found in all of my 30 years, I haven't found another way. Um, you need guidance in the desert. You need someone to help you out, to, to comfort you, to show you the way. And humility is the only way to do it. The quicker you surrender, the better. I'd love to hear if any of you guys have ever been in a desert season and what God spoke to you in that desert, how you got out of it, how long you were in it, and what advice do you have to give to other people that might be in a desert season themselves? Anyways, the sun is setting and I'm going to spend time with God in my desert. And I will see you guys later.